cares me on paper. It's such a reminder that my Redeemer lives. Yes. That I need a Redeemer. More than anything, that I need a Redeemer. And so this morning, Lord, we just come before you. We just want to give you praise because you live. Because this morning, although it wasn't on this day, we know that the tomb is empty, that there is nothing against us, that our debt was paid, it was canceled, that there's no sin that can speak against us. There's no blood but the blood of Christ that cries out against us. We thank you for that, God, that we have redemption in you, that we are free from every mistake, from every word that was spoken over us that was negative, from everybody who said we couldn't do it. We are free, God. We live in the abundant life of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you went down to hell and took death back so we have eternal life in you. We thank you, Lord, that we are redeemed from the very things that were meant to hurt us, to kill us, to destroy us. We are redeemed from it. We thank you, Lord, our whole faith, our whole foundation, everything that we believe is in the fact that that tomb was empty on that morning. And so we bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We thank you that you went from the tomb to heaven to intercede on our behalf. That even the words that we don't, we the things that we don't have words for you, you interpret them for us. You speak the things that our heart cries out to God. You tell him from a perspective that is only your own, having walked on this earth, you tell him what it is that we're feeling, what we're experiencing, what our needs are, our questions, the things that we don't have answers for. You actually put words to that for us, and so we bless you, Jesus. We declare and decree that, and we remind ourselves that at every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You are the Lord, the Savior, the Redeemer of our soul. We celebrate you this morning. We celebrate your magnificence. We celebrate your omnipotence. We celebrate you, Jesus. You are marvelous. You're amazing. We declare that our Redeemer lives. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Oh, you've been so good. Like the song says, you've been faithful. Through the ages, you've been faithful. There's been one message. That God so loved the world that he gave his son. So that all that believe in him would have eternal life. Hallelujah. Like the tomb was empty, so that we can continue to live. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for bringing your body. Thank you for going all the way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for never giving up on us. For calling us home, for calling us into relationship. Thank you for speaking to our spirits. Thank you for everything that you have prevented from happening in our lives. Thank you for every closed door. Thank you for every open door. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you that you are our comforter, Holy Spirit, that you're our guide, that you're our comforter. Thank you that we don't walk this walk alone. Thank you, Father God, that we are not lonely, but instead we're in family. Thank you, Lord, that you're mindful of us, that you know how many hairs are on our head, that you marvelously created us in our mother's womb. Thank you that there's a plan and a purpose for our lives, Lord God. Thank you that we're not here by accident, but instead, just like you sent Jesus on assignment, you put each one of us on assignment as well. We bless you this morning for that, Lord. We bless you for believing in us, for believing that we would turn our lives around, for believing that we would give you, give you the glory, give you the honor, give you the praise, that we would call out your name while it could still be heard, that we would seek your face, Lord God. Thank you for trusting us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for calling us. Thank you for rising up inside of us, Lord. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. You've been so good. You've been so good, Lord. We bless you. We glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
in, um, some of y'all know that I've been doing the Bible recap, Bible study, and we're going through the book of Job right now. Mm -hmm. And um, something stuck out to me in Job 19, if you haven't read the book of Job, it's a sad book. It makes you want to give up a million times while you're reading it. But if you push through, there are tidbits in it. And in Job 19, 25 to 27, it says, but as for me, he's talking to his friends. His friends are telling him, Job is going through something. He's sitting there full of boils. He lost all his money, all his cattle, everything. He's lost his family. Everything is gone. This was a man that was highly blessed, highly favored, super rich, right? And he lost everything. He's sitting there just in boils, like just rotting away. And his friends are like, you've committed a sin. The, 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 in Job 1, it tells us that Satan went to to God, and God said, have you considered Job? Mm -hmm. So Job was not a man that had sinned. But his friends, his friends spent the first 20 chapters telling him how much he sinned, and how a mess he is, and how he needs to repent. And in chapter 19, he pretty much cussing them out. I know I would have. <laughs> it says, but as for me, he tells them, I know that my redeemer lives. And he will stand upon the earth at last. And after my body has decayed, yet in my body I will see God. Yeah. I will see him for myself. Yes, I will see him with my own eyes. And I am overwhelmed at the thought. Yeah. How crazy is it that Job, which is Old Testament, pre-Jesus, yeah. is counting on the fact that he's going to see God. And the thought is overwhelming to him to think that his Redeemer lived long before his Redeemer lived. Job was saying these words. And I pray and I hope that as a church, today will not just be Easter, but it'll be a, a celebration of the fact that the tomb is empty and that our Redeemer truly lived. And with that, I'll bring up my husband. Amen. <laughs> Whether you, whether you believe or not, I want you to just open up your mouths and just give God the glory. Hallelujah. Whether you believe that he has risen or not, <laughs> doesn't matter to the facts that actually happen. And I want you to just give God the glory this morning. Thank you, Lord. He lives. He lives. Now, the amazing part about God's glory is this. His resurrection is not determined by whether you believe it or not. Mm, that's a fact. The fact that you're standing here is not determined by whether you believe he, he is risen or not. Because if it was, some of you might not be standing here because, you know, it's a little fuzzy right now. You know, it sounds like a fairy tale. You mean to tell me that a man was put on a cross and Three days later, he came back to life after giving his life. Yes. And that he that he, that he walked the earth and, and, and met with some people. It sounds a little far fetched, but he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He's here. He is risen. He is a risen savior. Yes. And we are here because of that. Yes. And because of that, we give glory to God. Lord, we thank you, we bless you, we magnify you. Hallelujah. We give you honor, we give you praise, because you are worthy of it. We appreciate you, Lord. Tell me to preach your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So I came here on assignment today, and we'll see how how that works out. First, I want to say hello to the guests. Welcome. Well, welcome. Welcome. welcome to the guests. Welcome to the friends. Welcome to the family. Hopefully, hopefully the guests become friends. Mm. And the friends become family. Yeah. Amen. And we could all go and, you know, skip through the streets or something. I don't know. <laughs> Happy Resurrection Sunday. Y'all look good. Y'all look good. Y'all actually look like Easter. Y'all look yeah. 
like a bunch of pinks and purples and off whites and tans. Y'all look good. I'm <laughs> He's not supposed to say that from the book. He's not, okay. He's not supposed to say stuff like that. Um, I am Pastor Mel, for those who do not know. Welcome to the online people. Um, I was born in sin, shaped in iniquity, mm. just like you. Uh, but because my Redeemer lives, mm, hallelujah. because God's blood is real, hallelujah. I am here as a redeemed soul. I am here with a second chance at life, uh, and I thank God for that. I'm not special. God is. Amen. <laughs> and because he is who he is, we get to say, we get to sit here in our Easter outfits, itching to get to a Easter egg hunt, right, guys? No? <laughs> itching right. to get a jelly bean. <laughs> because God is real, we get to breathe air in our lungs. Hallelujah. We get to celebrate yeah. um, on a day like this with each other, with our friends, our family, and our guests. And uh, I'm so grateful to God today. Uh, fun fact Easter. Resurrection Sunday is the is the most visited church day. More people come to church on Easter than any other day in the year. More than more than Christmas Eve, more than Mother's Day. Actually, Christmas Eve and Mother's Day don't even combine to get to the amount of people that come to church on Easter. Mm. That's a, that's, a, that's a fun fact. Look it up. Google it. <laughs> well, trust me. I don't know. We, we can find it. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a fact. And I, I'm, not, I'm not smart enough to not believe or witty enough to think something different other than that it has to do with something with resurrection. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That people feel that on this day, I gotta get to church. Now, whether it's been tradition, and we've always went to church when you know, when we were a little kid, my mom brought us to church, and we always went to church. So I, you know, I, as an adult, I, I'm still gonna go. And I, I, I gotta make it. I, I'm okay with that. Like I, I think that 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 there's something that has to do with with tradition and the fact that on Resurrection Sunday, the day that Jesus uh, resurrected out of the grave, that we feel. It's a day to come back to God, mm. or at least come back to church. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I think that's I think that's impressive. I think that's okay. Now now here's where it gets really good. Today is also the day where more people give their life to Christ than any other day. Right. Mm-hmm. Now the numbers will say, okay, that makes sense. More people are coming. More people will give their life to Christ. But here's the greatest fact of, as I was studying this. What is it? Your yeah. collar. Okay. Wow. She's, she's doing sign language. I said, what? What happened? Okay. We get more drum on Okay. I thought she was giving batting signals. I was like, still third? What should I do? Like, oh. <laughs> Hands, shoulders, knees. <laughs> I, you wasn't looking, so I was like, okay. <laughs> All right. My collar, okay. Are we good? Yeah. All right. As I was saying, that um, not only is people on this day give their life to Christ more than any other day, but people on this day rededicate their lives to Christ more than any other day. Yeah. There are more people on this day rededicating their lives to Christ. Now, it, this, this, for me, this is really good. Because it's, it's one thing to give your life to Christ. You're there, you're in the moment. Yeah. They're talking about Jesus. You know what? Let me just make that. Let me just take that fun. But, but to come back after you've already experienced something, come on. and you may think, oh, it didn't work that time. Why would I do it again? That's impressive. That, to me, that's, that's important. 
Because the same redeem, the redeeming power, the same resurrection power that, 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 that you seen the first time and, and you failed the first time is the same resurrection power that can bring you back again. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I'm back. I'm back. That's the title of my message. I'm back. See, some people, everyone's here for different reasons. But as I'm getting to the scripture, I promise you. Everyone's here for different reasons. Some people come um, because, you know, let me let me just go to church. Let me let me let me see what it's all about. Let me see, let me go see these phony people. <laughs> these people over here faking it. They get dressed up and put their good hair on. <laughs> <laughs> Brush their teeth and stuff. Let me go see what this is all about. Some people come to be nosy. You know people come to church to be nosy just to see what's going on. Some people come to church. Because they actually feel like I tried so many other things. Let me just let me just go try God. Mm. I, I tried. Uh, that's why I'm here. Let me <laughs> let me just be clear. I, I tried other things that didn't do any good. So let, let, let me let me give this a shot. Um, some people come just to give it a shot. Yeah. Some people come because they're at their wit's end. They feel a necessity to come. Mm-hmm. And I'm not here to judge any of those three. However you feel like you need to come or you want to come or you come to be no. However you get here, you get here. Amen. Amen. And, and with that said, however you get here, you know who's going to be here waiting for you? See, I, it would be bad if, if you came to church thinking, Oh, you know what? Let me just go there and be nosy. And Jesus is like, I'm not going to touch them because they're just here to be nosy. Mm. I'm not going to do anything for them because they're, they're not here for the right reasons. God doesn't care about your reasoning. Yeah. He cares about you showing up. And guess what? He's so powerful yeah. that even if you show up for the wrong reason, you'll leave with the right one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people come as guests and leave as family. Mm. A lot of people come as visitors and leave as family. And I'm not talking about this family. I'm not talking about fortified family. I'm talking about the family of heaven. Mm-hmm. The family of the kingdom. Mm-hmm. God is so good. Yeah, he is. I came to be nosy and I left with a, with a team. I left with a family. I came to judge them, but I left with power. Mm-hmm. God is so good. He is good. Today, it's not a day for me to try to convince anybody that the resurrection power is real. You find it for yourself. We're a church who believes even in the fact that when, when we do worship, mm-hmm. we worship for us. Mm-hmm. But you got to worship for you. That's Amen. it. Amen. And yes, it's our job to teach you what worship means. And yes, it's our job to teach you what the word means. And yes, it's our job to, to come up here and, 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 and give you three songs and a word. Yes, it's our job to do that. Yes, that's something that we're called to do. But guess what? The calling is not for us to do it for you guys to sit there and look at me. The calling is for us to do it so we can be an example. And not only that, so you can go back and do it yourself. That's Anything right. I say on this book, but I dare you to go and, and check it out for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Go check it out for yourself. And I even give you the the, the, the right and ability to say, hey, Pastor, you said something a couple weeks ago. Hey, it wasn't sitting too well with me. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yes, we wanted those. We wanted those ones. (laughs) Accountability. Yeah. Let's bring accountability back. We're talking about redemption. We're talking about redemption, and sometimes in order to be redeemed, mm, that's good. You got to be willing to take accountability. That's it. Yeah. You got to be willing to say, oh, "I'm a little jacked up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a little, it's a little rocky." But you got to be willing to take accountability in order for you to get to redemption. Accountability means something may have to die. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How can you be resurrected without death? Do you know that there is no Resurrection Sunday if there was no Friday? Mm. Uh, what do you mean by Friday? Friday is when he gave his life on the cross. Yeah. 
If he doesn't do that, then there's no resurrection. So, so, so Jesus going to the cross, coming back three days later, was an example for us. What's that example? That example is something may have to die. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So y'all know I'm on, I'm on this weight loss journey. <laughs> shout, shout out to my, my trainer back there, huh? So, yeah, give him a clap. He's, he's going to be the reason why your pastor comes in here with a bunch of tight shirts on this summer. <laughs> I'm telling you now. If I get one muscle back, it's over. <laughs> and he's going to be the reason. Shout out to my, my brother Tyrone. He, 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 he said, listen, you're looking crazy on that pool day. <laughs> he said it to me. Listen, you need real friends. Listen, I'm telling you, you need friends to tell you you're fat. And it'll be That's okay. That's a fact. That's you a need fact. real friends. Yes. Some yeah. of y'all want friends to only tell you what you want to hear. Yep. I got friends that are going to tell me what I don't want to hear. That's good. He sent me a picture. Ah! <laughs> I'm sorry. I love you, brother. I love you. <laughs> he sent me a picture. <laughs> if somebody sent you a picture of yourself, you might want to. I don't know whether to fight him or thank him. He sent me a picture of me. That's my buddy, man. Man. He said, you? Jesus. He sent me a picture. I said, who was, who's that? Who are those two people up there? But then he not only sent me a picture. It's back up. <laughs> oh, okay. Thought I was getting in trouble. <laughs> not only did he send me a picture, but then he sent me an invite. To go work out. We love that. We love that. Listen, listen. I'm going to tell you like this. Some of your friends will send you a picture and won't give you anything to to go with that picture. They'll send you you a a, a thumbs down, but they will never send you a thumbs up. (laughs) They'll send you you what you look like, but won't give you you the tools to get... You better check your circle. Check your circle. Are they sending you the picture of you without sending you the invite to the gym? Mm. But here's where it gets crazy. Are they going to the gym with you? That's not even my message. But somebody needs that. Because guess what? That's a part of redemption. That's a part of the resurrection. So so he sends me the picture. We go to the gym. And this man back here, I I thought he was my brother. He looked just like, I'm like, listen, he tried to kill me. No, y'all seen how y'all seen how I was yet yeah, last week. He tried to kill me, and then he tried to kill me, and then invited me back. I don't know. I almost died the first time, and and I'm foolish enough to know that I needed it. So I went back yesterday. Praise God. Yes. And. The reason why I'm telling you this story is showing up, showing up after death, showing up after it hurt, showing up after you were broken. No, no, no. Anybody can show up for the first one because you don't know what to expect. But after you know what you've gotten and you didn't get what you thought you was going to get. And can you show up again? Mm-hmm. My God. You, you, you've been to church before. Yeah. You didn't like the way they was looking at you. Mm. <laughs> you didn't like the way they smelled. Mm. <laughs> they was talking one way and living another way and you didn't like that. Mm. Wow. So you stopped. Because it didn't go the way you thought it was going to go. But can you Go again. Can you be resurrected? Can you say, I'm back? I'm back. I went to the gym and I promise you, I had the text message written, I'm not coming today. It was written. Pastor JT, it was written. And God wouldn't let me send it. He wouldn't let me send it. 
It's three o'clock in the morning. I'm about to press it. I'm, I'm working on the mat. I said, I'm, a pre- I'm not coming tomorrow. <laughs> not going to do it. They're not going to kill me twice. <laughs> Look like you're getting killed twice. I didn't press sin. And the whole time, I'm sitting there thinking about going back to the gym. God was saying to me, how are you going to preach a message I'm back and not show up? That's worth a clap. I don't know. Whoever just clapped, thank you. But that's worth it. I was, I was sitting in the bed like, Lord, who are you talking to? Why you, you got to be like this, Lord? He said, how are you going to preach a message called I'm back and not show up the next day? Not show up again. You can't preach something that you're not willing to live. You can't preach about about spiritual fitness and you're not and you don't have physical. I want to let you in something. Your physical. Oh, my God, I hear you, Holy Spirit. Your spiritual growth and your spiritual fitness will always look the way on the outside. What does that mean, Pastor Mel? You can't get away from being spiritually mature and spiritually fit and Holy Spirit is not saying you got to get that body right. It it can't happen. It can't happen. Because if you're spiritually fit, God wants you to be physically fit so that you will always have the power to give to people what they need. We're called to be examples. We're called to be examples. And the body will respond to the spirit of God. Y'all don't believe me? We was doing whatever we was doing yesterday. I don't know. Who, who invented CrossFit? I still don't know. I, I looked it up. I can't find I was looking. I was trying to look up something so I can have a reason not to go. Like, listen, this must be the devil. I don't know. I look up cross, I'm like, CrossFit. I don't know. This doesn't, this doesn't sound. But I, I went there after trying to find something that was wrong about it so I didn't have to go. And one of the sessions... And he, he, I don't think he knows this. But one of the sessions, because they make you do this, do exercise, and then you got to run outside. Mm-hmm. And you got to do, the ex, do, do four exercises, and then you got to run. One of the times running outside, I was walking. I'm not going to, I wasn't running. <laughs> Let's, I don't want to lie from the pulpit. I was walking. <laughs> I was not running. I was walking. And one of those times I was walking, I was literally praising and, pr- and praying to God. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, been there, been there. I said, Lord, I can't breathe. I don't want to. Yes. I need you to get through this. Yes. Yes. Listen, I want you to understand something. It's going to be painful. Yes. But it's going to be worth it. Amen. 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 Yes. And, 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 and for, for those who think I'm still talking about fitness, no. I'm talking about this journey. I'm talking about this walk. I'm talking about the redeeming power. I'm talking about the resurrection power of Jesus, the resurrection power of God. It it may be painful, but I'd rather be in pain with with him than be in pain without him. I'd rather have him going through it with me than me having to go through it by myself. God is not just my savior. He's not just my, my, my deliverer. He's also my friend. He'll show me the picture and then he'll give me what I need to change. But then here's where it gets good. He said, I'll go through it with you. That's right. That's right. That's right. I'll go through it with you. And here's where here's where God is so good. God is willing to go through it with me because he already been through it. Come on, that's right. Yes. I hate to keep bringing up this man, but there was something special about his story when I decided I was going to go to, to that gym and I said, you know, I'm going to work out. The, the thing that was special about me, because he lost a hundred and something pounds. Mm. He'd been through it. Yes. 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 I said, I said, oh, I've seen the picture before. Now I see the after picture. I said, you know what? He's been through it. Mm-hmm. I, can, I can get down with this. Yes. Don't you know that Jesus been through it? You're not serving a savior who doesn't know by example. Yeah, that's right. 
who, who doesn't know by experience. You're serving a risen Savior. If you don't believe me, let's read the scripture about it. Man. Matthew 28, 1. I'm reading the scripture because I don't want y'all to kick me out the church. <laughs> because the message has already been preached. Amen. But don't you know the word will preach by itself? Yeah. Early Sunday morning, Matthew 28, verse 1. Matthew 28, verse 1. Early Sunday morning. Early Sunday morning. Early Sunday morning. What's today? Sunday Is it early? Okay. Early-ish? All right. Early Sunday morning, 9.30 a.m. Sunday morning. I don't know. As a new day was dawning. Somebody say new day. New day. <laughs> see, see, I can't wait till we get to the part where you guys have experienced Jesus so good and experience Holy Spirit so good that when I say stuff like new day, you understand that I'm already talking to you. <laughs> when you say when I say stuff like new day, you automatically start to experience what God has want you to experience because he knows that in his word, he's talking about a new day. But in your life, you know what a new day looks like. See, I need some people that understand that, listen, yesterday was, was yesterday, and tomorrow is not promised. So when pastor says new day, you got to automatically stand up and lift up your hands, because new days are not promised. See, I need a few people that just understand what the word means. As the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the, and the other Mary... That's messed up. They didn't even get it. They said the other Mary. I just read that. Hump, I just read that right now. I was like, man, they ain't even. Mary and the other Mary. Jeez Louise. Jeez, the Bible don't shade a little bit sometimes. <laughs> Mary and, the, you know, her. Big Mary, little Mary, huh? Woo! Wow. Went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone and sat on it. His face was shone like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow, white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the woman. Don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid. He said, I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. Somebody say he isn't here. He is risen from the dead. He is risen from the dead. This is my favorite part. Just as he said it would happen. Mm. We're going to stop right there for a second. I, I want to just share this with you quickly. Number one, the women were going to the grave. Now, the grave, you're thinking of a grave as like a grave in the ground. No, it's not a grave like that. It's more like a cave. Right? It's a cave. It's like a, it's, it's over the earth and it's a cave. And it's like you put a stone and you roll a stone in front of it. And you place a stone in there and that's, that's considered the cave. And then there was like different, you could put different bodies depending on your lineage and your family and those different sections of the cave, things like that. And these women were going to embalm or to put frankincense and myrrh and different fragrances in, for Jesus so that his body, when it, you know, as his body's going through the process, the, 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 the scent would, would be on him and in, in, in him. So, so the reason why I'm telling you this particular piece is the fact of the matter is this. They were going to do their job. They were going to do something they thought they needed to do. But the fact of the matter is this. They didn't believe what Jesus told them. Mm. See, they were going to do and follow as usual. Mm. Somebody dies, mm. we got to go put this put the stuff in the, you know, get the flowers and put the stuff in the body so that the body could, could, could be, you know, could, could be embalmed and, 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 and won't rot and things like that. All the things that they normally do. Not remembering that Jesus told them 
I'm going to rise in three days. <laughs> so they went to go do something based off of their normal, natural experience, forgetting about the promise that God made. Yeah. How many of us Come on. go through every day as usual, mm-hmm. taking steps in the wrong direction, every day as usual? Now, 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 Pastor Mel, that's a little harsh saying that's the wrong direction. They were doing what they were taught to do. Don't you know that Jesus' word trumps what you were taught to do? I know. I know that. You were taught some way. You were taught to do something a specific way. And, and you've been going through that every single day. But once the word of God enters into what you were taught to do, that changes to what you need to do. God is saying in this particular passage, hey, listen, I said, I promised that I wouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. You should expect me not to be there. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You should expect me not to be there. But they didn't believe. Yeah. And these were people that were close to Jesus. Mm-hmm. So they go and he's not there. And they're a little frightened by the angel. And they continue on their journey. And it says, the women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples and the angels the message. Mm -hmm. They rushed to give the disciples the angels message. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they went. When Jesus does something that he said he was going to do, and you find out that what he said was actually true, it is now your responsibility. Come on. It is your responsibility to go and share the message of the promise. All right. Yes. All right. Come on. All right. All right. All right. Come on. See, I know for a fact, I know some of y'all's story. <laughs> I, I, I prayed for friends to be in the church. Mm-hmm. I said, Lord, my wife will tell you. I said, Lord, I might not be that good of a pastor because none of my friends come here. How can I be a pastor and my friends don't even come? <laughs> and now that they're here, I know for a fact some of their stories. So I know that some of the things they've been through, they can clearly say, listen, Jesus kept his promise. Yes. I showed up. I was going just to do what I, was, what I normally do. And Jesus proved to me what he promised to me. Yes. Listen, you got to understand how good Jesus is when he proves to you what he promised to you. Mm-hmm. See, some people can make promises but not prove it. Mm-hmm. But, when, but when there's proof to the promise, there's a different level of experience that goes along with that. And nothing can negate your experience. Mm-hmm. But once you get that experience, it's now up to you for you to go and spread the message that the promise has been proven. You tried it. You put on your little outfit. <laughs> put your little bangs in and put your little baby, put your baby head. You tried it because somebody promised it. But then when that promise is proven, what you gonna do now? Mm, come on. What you gonna do now? Are you gonna spread the message that a, that that, he, that a promise was made and the proven and proven happened? And that's what God is saying. And I want you to understand this. The, 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 the resurrection of Jesus is a clear example of what God wants you to be in your life. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's a clear example of what he, what he did in the resurrection. See, we put a lot of credence. We put a lot of power into, 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 his, into his death. The church. The church, oh, Jesus died for me. And, and that's, listen, I love that. That's, that is actually true. We put, a lot of, we put a lot of credence and a lot of power into his birth. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's great. Yeah. But don't you know that if he never was resurrected, those other two don't even make no matter? Yes. That's right. Because guess what? Because he is resurrected, the other two actually mean something. Because guess what? It is finished when he resurrects. Amen. Amen. 
The fact that he made a promise before he died and then lived up to that after his resurrection is the reason why we stand here. Do you know that if he, if he didn't rise again, we don't rise again? Oh, see, the power is not just in the cross. The power is also in the resurrection because he took and defeated death. Now, you're saying, Pastor Mel, are we going to rise again? Absolutely. Absolutely. You're not dressing your good Easter outfit for no reason. You're dressing your good Easter outfit because God says, listen, because I was resurrected, so will you be. So will you be. You don't believe me? Let's read it. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Romans 6, 2. Romans 6, 2. Romans chapter 6, verse 2. Since we have died to our sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death? Somebody say joined him in his death. For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by his glorious power of the Father, now we are also may live new lives. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, we too may live through that glorious power. We know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that we so that sin might know uh, might lose its power in our lives. We are also I'm sorry, we are no longer slaves to sin for we died with Christ. We were set free. Somebody say set free. Set free. From the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know we will also live with him. Mm-hmm. We are Sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead. Is there anybody here sure this morning? Are there anybody here sure this morning that you will rise because Christ was risen? Now, I'm not just talking about, "Ah, I think so. It could happen. Maybe I'm talking about having a know that you know that you know. And listen, I want to let you know something. It's, It's okay to not be sure. It's just not okay to stay unsure. Right. Come on. It's a, listen, I started off unsure. I had to go get proof. I had to see it for myself. But my experiences are real. I've seen his power in my life. I've seen the glory in my life. I've seen the resurrection in my life. I've seen it for myself. And I, I, I double dare you to go see for yourself. See, see, a lot of times we go by what people say. I don't go to the church. Hey, there ain't nothing but fakes in there. Hey, no, what they doing? Hey, what they doing? You like that voice? What they doing? <laughs> That's how haters sound. What they doing in there? <laughs> hey, what they doing? They faking it. Pastor, they're stealing the money. Oh, man. That's the, <laughs> That's they make fun mean. of it. And then, and then we sit back at our home, and be like, "I ain't going there." They told me it was. They told me it was shady. They told me it was shady business in there. And we take their word for it mm-hmm. instead of going to see for ourselves. Let me tell you. Let me tell you a little story, real quick. I didn't like Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Naomi, I don't like Brussels sprouts, and I never had them. <laughs> come on, come on. Josh, I never had them. I didn't like them because Steve Urkel didn't like them. I'm not even joking. Steve Urkel said, Brussels sprouts. He said that, and I just, you know what? I'm not eating Brussels sprouts. I don't like them. Josh, and then one day, me and my wife both didn't like Brussels sprouts. Never had. Never had. We and decided we were going to try it. And I don't know what they put on them Brussels sprouts. I don't know what they put on them Brussels sprouts. I love Brussels sprouts. 
all of them. But I had to try it for myself. And you know what's the sad part about us? I missed out on so many years of Brussels sprouts. Listening to people. But here's where it gets so good. Listen to me. Listen to me, people. God is calling you into a resurrection. But you got to stop listening to people. Because half of the people you listening to ain't never tried Brussels sprouts. Yes. And they going by what they heard. Yes. And they haven't tried it themselves. Because I know for a fact that if you try it the real way, if you do it the way God intended you to do it, if you come into it, God will make sure that you get what you got to get out of it. My God. But here's where it gets good. God is so good that you can try it, it not be good, and you can have a chance to come back. And God said, listen, I tried it one time and it might not have been that good, but I came back and God said, listen, I said, God, I'm back. He said, guess what? I got it for you again. God is willing and able to have you come back. Somebody say, I'm back. This is for all my note takers. Really quickly. The resurrection is important to believers for several reasons. I'm going to give you five. The resurrection is important to believers for several reasons. I'm going to give you five. Right quick. I'm going to fly through these. Because I want to pray for people. Number one, the resurrection tells a completed story. The resurrection tells the completed story. If we end with the story of Jesus dying on the cross, we end with the story of a defeated Savior. We end with the story of a defeated Savior. But because he is risen, (laughs) the story now gives us the victorious Savior. The one who defeated death. The one who gave the people he came for. Don't you know Jesus came for us? Mm -hmm. Jesus came for us that we might have life. Mm -hmm. And the reason, I missed that part. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he was, that he rose from the dead is the him giving us life. Because guess what? If you defeat death, guess what you guess what you get? Say it again. If you defeat death, guess what you get? There's only one consolation prize to defeating death. And that's life. <laughs> See, here's the deal. In your life, you sometimes have to defeat death. And the consolation prize to that is life. Okay, what does that mean, Pastor Mel? Sometimes you got to take death off. You got to defeat death. Because the way you're going could lead to death. So if I say, listen, death, you are defeated. Jesus did it first, and I'm going to do it again. And I defeat death, I turn around, and immediately I have life. Some of you guys are here living your abundant life because you defeated death. Josh, I know for a fact that you are here because life and death looked you in the eyes, and you said, no, I'm choosing God. I'm choosing my family. I'm choosing my wife. And that is the only reason you're here, sir. Because you chose life. The consolation prize is life. Number two, if Jesus does not rise from the dead and defeat death, he nullifies all of the promises because he didn't keep this one. Listen to me. Y'all, act, y'all can act like y'all want to act, but if somebody makes you a promise, they can have kept all of their promises. If they break one of the promises, you don't even believe all the other ones they kept. That's a fact. You ain't got to say yes. I know for a fact that I can do a million things for you, AJ, but if I break one promise, you might be like, eh, I don't know about this guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Nah, that's not a fact, AJ. Me and you, we cool like that? We good? All right. Jesus had to come through on the resurrection because he didn't want to nullify all of his other promises. And because he did, all his promises are yes and amen. 
all his promises are yes and amen due to the resurrection. Number three, without the resurrection, there is no foundation to our faith. Him revealing himself to people after resurrection after resurrection is what brings people back together. Jesus dies. He goes. He comes back three days. The ladies go and tell everybody. Jesus then goes and starts walking around telling everybody, hey, listen, I know you thought I was dead, but here I am. I'm back together. I'm back. Now, all the people who believe, who actually didn't believe because they all thought he was dead, who didn't believe he was coming back, now say, okay, oh, he is back. His promises are real. We're not crazy. Josh, don't you know how good it is to say we're not crazy? Not being crazy brings people together. Because if we're all not crazy, then we're all together. And his resurrection did that for them. It gave them solidi- it solidified the, 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 the story. It solidified the promise. And now, because we all believe in the same promise. Oh, my God. Because we all believe in the same promise and we've all experienced the resurrection and the same thing. Guess what happens when we come together? We form the church. The church is built off the resurrection. Not not just of Jesus, but of his people. My resurrection story, Hector's resurrection story, Pastor JC's resurrection story, when when our stories come together, we we build the church. We've all been resurrected from different things. We all died to different things. But they all tell one story. The power of God. The power of Jesus. My story and your story. You overcome by the words of your testimony and the blood of the Lamb. Your story is how we get together. Number four, the resurrection is our hope. We don't have to mourn because we serve a risen Savior. You don't have to hang your head. You don't have to cry no more. You don't have to cry no more. Yes, mama. He is risen. It is real. I don't care what they told you. Go get those Brussels sprouts for yourself. (laughs) Jesus' resurrection shows us the example of a model for our lives. The resurrection is a model for our own lives. When everyone, when you go get baptized, there's two baptisms. There's baptism in the Holy Spirit and there's baptism in water. When you get baptized, that is you saying to your old self, I am no longer dealing with you. I am coming out a new creature. I am here for it all. Anybody here for it? I'm here for it. Oh, man, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I'm here for it. As much as I don't want to show up on that Saturday, I'm here for it. As much as I don't want to show up on Sunday, I'm here for it. Listen, as much as my life has, 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 has thrown curveballs at me, and sometimes it don't look the way I want it to look, I'm here for it. Somebody say, I'm back. I'm back. Did I give you five? Jesus' resurrection shows you an example. That's number five. The resurrection is important because the resurrection gives you an example. That's number five. Number four. The resurrection is our hope. We don't have to mourn because of the resurrection. Because if Jesus was still in that grave, we would still be crying. But we don't have to cry no more. Stand to your feet. You once was dead in your sin. But I want you to know that that person, that person that died, that old Jew, I want you to be so convinced in what Jesus has done for you. I want you to be so convinced and that what, what the promises of God is for your life. I want you to be so convinced that you don't even go back and look for that old person anymore. Mm-hmm. Because you know the grave is empty. Mm-hmm. Glory be to God. That's so good. 
The grave is empty. And, and, and guess what? You're going to have naysayers in your life who are going to go look and go back and look for that old you. They're going to look for that old body. Hey, let's, 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 let's go, let's go. We get a little, you know what I mean? We just go do what we, you know, you know what we used to do. We, go, we, just go, we just go do what we used to do. And I want you to tell them the grave is empty. It's not there no more. I've been redeemed. I've been resurrected. It's not there anymore. And I want you to keep telling them that until you believe it yourself. Until you try to shake something that you used to do and you ain't got that move no more. Because it's gone. You try to do the Tootsie Roll, you ain't got <laughs> I'm so sorry. You got the Tootsie, but no roll. If you can't come to church and have fun, you, can't, you shouldn't be able to go anywhere. That's right. That's right. Amen. I want you to put it in your heart. I'm back. I'm redeemed. I am resurrected. And I'm not going nowhere. I'm not going nowhere. I may have started off because I was a promise to a friend. I may have started off because my wife made me go. I may have started off because I, I, I wanted to see what they were doing in there. I just wanted to be nosy. However you started off, you're here. Now is your time. Now is your opportunity to receive all of what they talk about. To receive the promise, the promises that these people talk about. My Redeemer lives, and therefore I can live. I can live. I can live. I can live. I don't have to worry about it. I can live. Don't you understand how great it is to have life? And not to be walking dead anymore. Not to have that thing inside of me that feels empty. Because I'm alive but I'm dead. And now, now I know that I'm alive. I'm alive. Father God, I pray that their hearts be changed. That their souls will be renewed. That they will find a new within themselves. Lord, touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, mama. As their heads are bowed and their eyes are closed, Lord, touch them right now in the name of Jesus. They thought they were coming here for one thing, hallelujah, but they received something different, God. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Fill their hearts with your Holy Spirit, God. Fill their bodies with your Holy Spirit, God. Lead them into all truth, God, and understanding, God. Hallelujah, God. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, from this day forward, they will never be the same again, God. They will never be the same again. From this day forward, they will never be the same again. Lord, I pray you touch them right now. Touch them right now. Mmm. They just want to feel you, God. They want to feel you, God. They want to see you, God. Do it right now, God. Breathe in them the breath of life, God. 
breathing in the breath of life, God. Hey, come on, master. Breathing in the breath of life, God. Give them life. Give them life. In Jesus' name. Amen. That music was cute a little later than expected. I tried really hard. As someone that... Um, gave her life to Christ on Easter. I want you to know that you have an opportunity if you haven't already to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It was during um, an Easter drama play thing that I just felt so compelled to rededicate my life to God after struggling with a bunch of things that I'm not gonna list here. And so I wanna just invite you to pray with me. Yeah. Um, bow your head if you feel led to repeat after me, I invite you to. Father, we thank you for your redeeming power. We thank you that on this day, the tomb was empty. And today, I declare that my heart is full. That Jesus is welcomed to live in it. I invite you into my heart, Lord. I invite you into my heart, Lord. I ask, I ask that you forgive me, that you forgive me for, every sin, for every sin, known and unknown. Known and unknown. I, repent. I repent. I turn away. I turn away. And I receive, and I receive your saving grace. Your saving grace. I celebrate you. I celebrate you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah! 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 We, just so you know, we have like three minutes before the other church walks in. So, I want you to run and just grab a little uh, thing, uh, I can't think of the name right now. Communion. communion cup. And we're gonna do communion really quickly. And basically, only the only people who should not partake in, in, in communion are people who do not believe in the risen blood of Jesus Christ, in the, in the fact that it was shed, right? If you believe in Jesus Christ here, we don't have no requirements, you don't have to be bad. You just gotta believe that Jesus is who he is and he did what he did. And if you feel led to part, participate with us, I invite you, um, a few days before he went to the cross, they were sitting down and he was having dinner with his disciples and he took the bread and it says um, in Matthew 26, 26, it says, as they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it into pieces and gave it to the disciples taking, saying, so I invite you to like open up your little cup and break the bread. You wanna hear it snap because that's what happened to his body. And you can take this and eat it, for this is my body, Jesus said. You can eat your bread. And then he took the cup of wine and he gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and he said, each of you drink from it, for this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It's poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom you may drink your, your wine. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord, and we bless you. We thank you, Jesus, for giving up your body, for shedding of your blood. We thank you for your holiness. We know that by partaking in communion, we are sanctified. We are redeemed. We thank you, Lord, that it is not um, the act of taking, but the belief behind it. And so we bless you this morning, and we love you. And um, just as a reminder, uh, Bible study, the time has changed. We're now meeting on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. So if you log in at 6.30, you'll be by yourself for 30 minutes. Is it 7 or 7? 7. 7 on Wednesdays. See you next week.